Hey guys, I'm Aussie Villain and welcome back to the Detroit Tigers as we build for Season 10. It's uh, the off-season special today. We're going to have our end of season in wards in just a moment. And when we come back from that, we'll see who's won the World Series. And, uh, well, no matter who it is, I feel like we could easily have taken them this uh, this this uh, season, the way we finished it uh, towards the end there. But we'll build towards next season. We have a lot of money to spend, no one to renew. So uh, let's see what we can do. Can we build the perfect team? Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Detroit Tigers end of season awards. Thank you. Oh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Detroit. Thank you so much. You're too kind. Thank you and welcome to our end of season awards. It's been a season of two halves, hasn't it? That's terrible at the start. But by the end of the season, the best team in baseball, I have no doubt about that. So, yeah, I think uh, the best way to begin tonight is maybe a little bit of a, of a heavy heart to remember those those useless overpaid twats, let's be honest, that cost us a postseason berth this season. So let's get to the awards, and the first award tonight goes to the pitcher with the most wins, and this guy has just been a shining light season after season for us, and uh, with 15 wins, he's shone yet again. Congratulations, Yordani Kamona. Next award is for the man with the highest batting average, and he may have only been here for half a season, but what a half a season it was, with a batting average of 328. Congratulations, Keenan TV. The next award is the Golden Bullseye, awarded to the man hit most by pitchers. And this guy is elite. He is amongst the best this club has ever seen. Uh, and a further 17 times added to his tally this season. Couldn't quite get into the top three all time, but uh, maybe next year. Congratulations, Tony Vega. The next award is the Golden Anchor, awarded to that man who drags a team down by hitting into the most double plays. And it was a rookie season for this guy this year, and he's shown again, he, he, he means business. 15 times he hit into a double play. Congratulations, Octavio Mendoza. The next award is for the pitcher who has issued the most walks. The Golden Boot, of course, is the trophy. And uh, this year, another another stunning, stunning effort from this man. 72 walks. He's already been up here once tonight. Congratulations, Yordani Kamona. The next award are the Golden Glasses awarded to that batter that just struggles to see the ball. The man who has struck out the most. And it's another rookie setting his stall out early in his career, which is brilliant to see. 167 strikeouts. Congratulations, Adamilson Fernandez. The next award is the Golden K, awarded to the pitcher with the most strikeout victims. And uh, we've already seen this guy up here twice tonight. This is for the hat trick. 169 strikeouts. Congratulations once more. Yordani Kamona. The next award is the Golden Broom, awarded to the man who sweeps clean the bases, the player with the most RBIs. And, uh, well, this guy's future is maybe up in the air a little bit, but perhaps we shouldn't be so quick to brush him aside. 95 RBIs, just short of the ton. So congratulations, Tony Vega. And now it's time to award the best ERA for a pitcher. And uh, this guy is on for a clean sweep of the pitching awards. An ERA of 293. Get back up here, your Danny Kimona. And now it's time to award the batter with the most home runs. And it is another hat trick of awards for, uh, for a player, which is brilliant to see. 27 home runs. The winner is, of course, Tony Vega. 
And now it is time to acknowledge the horse's ass for this season's worst player. And if I'm completely honest, I really wish this guy had been on our in memoriam list at the top of the show. But unfortunately, nobody wanted him. So uh, for just being useless and a useless person we couldn't trade, the horse's ass goes to... Arul Vera. And now it is time to acknowledge this season's best pitcher. Now, as ever, there is a formula we use to determine this, and that, along with a list of tonight's winners, is down in the description of the video. But in third place, with a score of 17.45, it's the new closer, Josh Eknes. In second place, with a score of 27.69, it's the rookie sensation, Mario Morales. But the winner, and yet another pitching trophy for the clean sweep, with a score of 36. Point one eight. It is your Dani Kamuna. And now it is time to acknowledge the best batter. And once again, the formula we use to determine this is down in the description of the video. And in third place, with a score of 34.78, it is Troy Childers. In second place, with a score of 42.55, what a half a season it was, Keenan TB. But the winner with a score of 44.74, and no longer at the club, it's Vlad Jr. And now it is time to acknowledge the Golden Star for this season's MVP, and uh, I want to thank everybody who took the time to nominate and then vote for their MVP candidate, and the man you have voted as your MVP... It's a clean sweep of every category he could have won. Your Dani Kamona. Congratulations. Congratulations, your Dani and the rest of the winners tonight. What's that? No, your Dani, you've got your same contract for next year, mate. Uh, it's been a, a brilliant second half to the season. I think we have a lot to look forward to for next season. Big off season coming up. I don't know we need to do too much, to be honest. I think we put our faith in these kids that have uh, shone so well. And uh, maybe go again with them next year. See what they can do over a full season. But uh, look forward to seeing everybody back at Comerica Park next season. High hopes. And uh, let's hope that it ends, uh, doesn't end in the regular season. We go all the way to the World Series. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Can somebody help your Donnie with his trophies, please? All right, end of season awards are done and the Chicago Cubs are the World Series champions, beating the Twins 4-1 in the World Series. The Twins knocked out the Texas Rangers and then the Seattle Mariners on their way to uh, way to glory. So there we go. That is that. Hopefully this time next year, we will see ourselves uh, at least competing in a World Series. That would be a very, very nice thing to happen, wouldn't it? But anyway, uh, let's have a look and see what else we can do here. Because it is now officially the off-season. Now, let's have a quick look here. And I can see AL gets rid of designated hitters. We've had a rule change. So that is uh, going to be interesting. That's going to have to... Yeah, well, that's going to be interesting anyway. Uh, position up. Well, we can see how we did there. Uh, hopefully, it is zoomed in enough for everybody. And uh, if we go down, more important is what we're going to do next year, which is play 500 again, acquire a gold glove winner, have a final total balance of 19 million. I really wish they would just adjust the budgets accordingly for that keep building in order to reach the playoffs in the next five seasons and he will check in again next season so that is that uh the new budget is looking a little less it's usually 170 million isn't it so it's gone down a little bit but uh, we'll check in on that momentarily staff members retiring which is always a little bit disappointing there's nobody leaving in terms of a staff member that we didn't want to leave so that is all good we've got a trade proposal that involves mike gladstone that is our australian catch-up I can guarantee you he's not going anywhere. I will make this team an Australian team yet, I tell you. We've already got three, uh, three myself and two others in the uh, coaching staff. So we're going to keep going. Now, AL gets rid of designated hitters. Now, that might be the death nail in the coffin of, uh, of Tony Vega. Because if there's no designated hitters, do we really want to keep him? And we'll see what he's going to be asking for in a minute. But do we really want to keep him to be a pinch hitter? And I'm going to guess maybe not. So we've got uh, Brandon Barrera on 1.7. That's absolutely fine. We've got Kamuna. I'd, I'd love to sign him to a longer term deal, but 6 million is okay for him. Harrison on 1.9 is fine. The Jesus on 2.5 is fine. Litwicky on 1.3 is fine. Uh, Reese Olsen 
is uh, on 1.1, which is fine. He's really, really underrated out of our bullpen. Ethan Robertson, I'm not even going to bother. Oh, maybe I should keep him around because he's... No, I'm not even going to bother. Uh, I don't understand what happened with him, but he can be a free agent. He was a just such a disappointing trade. Uh, they don't all work out, though. If we, that's the worst that happens, and that's fine. Soya is fine. Eknis is fine on 1.9. Zeon Rose, 1.5 is good. Errol Vera on 8 million after what he did this season. I'm going to say possibly not, but we'll wait and see there. Uh, Limes is absolutely fine. And Tony Vega, 7 million. See, 7 million. The issue is where do we play him? He can't play first. We don't need him to play first base anyway. And yeah, well, I'm not quite sure what we do with that. So for the most part, I'm okay with that. But the no designated hitter rule, that I think might be the end for Tony Vega. But like I say, I need to have a think. All right, it's time for some Major League Baseball awards, starting with the Golden Gloves. And unfortunately, it doesn't look as though we had anybody there, which is maybe a little bit surprising. We do have some good defensive players. Uh, National League side of things, we can see it there. And uh, I don't recognize any players that we've had at the Tigers. Uh, then we had the uh, the reliever. So the American League reliever of the year is former Tiger Holden Powell. Of course, he just wanted too much money, which is why he uh, he moved on. But uh, no Tigers or other former Tigers involved in that. The National League reliever, uh, I don't see our Mike Ruff. Well, it's annoying, isn't it? Because he was quite terrible for us. But he's gone off to Chicago Cubs, won himself a World Series and been uh, right up there amongst the best relievers in the league as well. Uh, the Platinum Stick Awards. Let's have a look and see what we've got here. Um, the pitcher is there, but that's probably because uh, it's just changed to have no designated hitters. Would that be the reason? Uh, if we go down the rest of the list here, then there are no Tigers there either, which again is maybe slightly surprising, but maybe on another hand, it's not Urbina though, as a former Tiger down there in right field. Uh, and on the National League side of things, do we see any former Tigers there? I don't think so. No, we don't. Uh, so then we've got the Rookie of the Year, and that went to not one of our guys. And we had a lot of rookies this year, so that is disappointing. It's uh, Yusfimi Adachi, who uh, is a 32-year-old Japanese guy who was probably uh, amongst the... Uh, the uh, international free agents last season in terms of the national league well then uh, we're not going to recognize any of those names steve mccall though is the man and uh, not a very good defensive shortstop so it's maybe surprising that he got that i'm surprised that we didn't get anybody uh you know surely we've had uh, one or two guys that are decent um you know as rookies we did have a lot of rookies this year if we go to the uh to the what's it called managers of the year the cubs have won it for the national league uh we skipped one there and it is the new york yankees boo uh their manager has won uh manager of the year for them next up it is the cy young award carmona i'd say a dark horse but unfortunately, he is around at the same time as Christian Nunez, who is an absolute star. And he has won, uh, he has won another Cy Young, hands down. Carmona there, though, in fourth, it looks like. Or was it fifth? Two, four. It's a bit small writing for my eyes, but I think he's fourth there. So he, he was brilliant this year again. And over on the National League, it is Vladimir Lopez of the Dodgers that has uh, won Goton. Shockingly enough, is. <laughs> up there oh it's so frustrating when that happens isn't it all right final is uh the mvp it'll be vlad jr won't it and it is julio rodriguez of the mariners now do we have any tigers there anywhere uh going down the list i don't see any uh oh wait carmona is right down the bottom there along with urbina uh now on the national league side of thing it is tatis jr that has won it and i think vlad is actually in the national league now so that's probably well he's not going to feature this year is he because uh yeah he is uh, only there for half a season i did look at vlad and he has signed a contract extension with the uh, who are they the indianapolis knights or whatever so 29 million he's there for the foreseeable future um so, yeah, we won't have a chance to get him back off free agency. And uh, speaking of free agency, that'll be coming up soon. Okay, so we have uh, some arbitration hearings. Let's have a look here. Zeon Rose will be on 1.8, so a little bit more than what we offered. Carmona is on uh, 6.8, which is absolutely fine. Tony Vega, 7.3, which is uh, what we offered him. I decided not to get rid of him yet. Uh, I mean, as a pinch hitter, he might be useful. He might be... a. a maybe an okay player to stick out in left field. Um, yeah, so I didn't want to sort of completely 
write him off as of yet. Uh, Limas has got uh, 1.5 essentially, which seems an absolute steal. Litwicky's got 1.3. Eknes has got one, but essentially 2 million, which again is absolutely fine. He's going to be our closer this next season, of course. De Jesus has got 3 million, which is a little bit more than we were hoping for. Harrison has got 1.9, which is less than he wanted. Olsen has got 1.1, which is less than what he wanted. Uh, Barrera's got 1.8, essentially, which is less than what he wanted. Vera's got 8 million. Now, I'm deciding not to get rid of Vera just yet. I'm hoping last year was just a one-off bad season, and he's going to bounce back. Uh, that my thoughts on him may change through this offseason, though. We'll have to wait and see how things play out. And Sawyer has got 1.3, which again is less than what he will. We had greedy players this year, didn't they? not realize we didn't make the playoffs. Anyway, free agency is coming up momentarily. Now, if we have a look at the international amateurs uh, or international free agents, there is a starting pitcher here. We probably do need a starting pitcher. Uh, let's let's just offer a minor league deal for now is 28 the other one that i saw here was uh what's got here another starting pitcher is it um he's already gone somewhere he's at milwaukee uh i did is it this guy i think yeah now he's 22 there might be a pitcher there for us a little bit of development as well i don't want to give him a major league deal and i'd be very happy to stick him in triple a and see how he gets on uh but there was nobody else really in amongst these uh these international free agents that is of interest to us uh really we're looking for starting pitches and maybe maybe an outfielder but that's about it now if we go and have a look at the actual free agents here and there might be some players of interest here obina walling of course former players of ours julio rodriguez did we not just see him win mvp as a center fielder might be of interest to us as well at 29 um so let's go and have a full look here so we have got otani wanting 2.2 million uh at 36 i mean it's difficult to see a downside to sticking him in at right field isn't there so, 2.2 .2 million, that's an absolute steal for one season. I mean, you can't make up how good that is. Please come back to a show high for 2.2 .2 million. Um, now, we're going to have a look. Rodriguez here wants 39 million. Now, he would be a very good outfielder. We are maybe looking for an outfielder as well. He has led the league in batting averages. He has won two MVP awards. He would be a very nice addition to the team. But would he be a very nice addition to the team at 39 million a year? I'm going to say no. Uh, we do have, we do have 36 million to spend, so we're not we're not short of cash. I don't know that I want to spend that much on one player though. Uh, if we go down, Holden Powell wants 14 million. Urbina wants 34. Uh, Alvarez is 33 wants 25 million now he's not going to be the best defensive outfielder but he could do a job uh potentially but again at 33 is that what we want to do uh Bo Bichette is a free agent wants 27 million so there's a lot of options here isn't there this guy is wrecked so we probably don't want to spend big money on him is Obina still wrecked he is so we probably don't want to spend big money on him either uh quite a few of our old boys here Indigo Diaz is a free agent uh where is Andrew Walling? I wonder what sort of money he wants. There he is there. He wants 25 million. So, yeah. Well, I'll see what I can find here in terms of a starting pitcher. Uh, I think if Otani comes in, that's probably Vega out, isn't it? So, yeah. Well, we'll see how this plays out. But uh, this is exciting. Favorite time of the year. Okay, so maybe not huge news in the terms of uh, the future of the club, but Josh Eckness, who did really promising things as our close-up uh, second half of the year, he was a free agent at the end of this coming season, so we've offered him an extension, which he's agreed to. So we can see it over here. It is five years uh, or 2.1 million. Now, he is technically a starting pitcher. I figure at that, uh, he, he'd be very tradable at 2.1 million, I would have thought. So... Very, very happy with that. It just fills up that, you know, that one role, even if we have to just use him in the bullpen, not as a close-up uh, or, you know, as a you know, long reliever or something like that. There's enough there. I think 2.1 million is uh, is absolutely fine for him, even if he's not quite ever been the starter I thought we were going to get out of him, uh, out of the bullpen. I think 2.1, five years, I think that'll work. We have breaking news out of Detroit where Tigers GM as a villain has called a press conference to announce a new signing. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Well, uh, this is exciting, isn't it?
Doesn't look like he's aged a day since we last saw him, and only two million dollars. I mean, what was everybody else thinking? What are the other GMs doing? You know they haven't got a twin brother, do you, mate? No, no, we've signed the real deal. So he is back, Shohai Otani, 2.2 million, one year deal. I don't understand how we've got him so cheaply and so easily as well. I just don't quite get it. Now, before you ask, he's not going to be pitching, uh, mainly because you can see his pitching stats are not fantastic. The injury proneness is also fragile, so he just won't be doing that. I mean, if we have a look at what he did after he left, you could maybe argue he wasn't brilliant. He had a good year in Texas, though, and uh, this last season in LA maybe, maybe wasn't brilliant, but... Yeah, I don't know. I just, for 2 million, I mean, we'll waste more than 2 million on players this season, that's for sure. So, and we've got money to burn as well. I just don't see a downside to this signing. Uh, if he works, we've got an absolute bargain. If it doesn't, that's 2 million bucks. Who cares? Okay, it is Rule 5 Draft. Now, we have a look at the uh, at the draft pool here. There's no one that really makes us better. Now, we do have one or two players here that we could be losing that are not quite good enough, to be honest, to uh, to be calling to the majors and, and to offer them, you know, that spot on the secondary roster. But equally, I mean, this guy is close, but I don't want to... I'm almost willing to risk losing them as opposed to, you know, have to offer them uh, that deal. So let's go and uh, do the draft. Like I say, we're not going to be taking part, but we'll find out if uh, if we do lose anybody. If I can figure out how to start the draft, the tab with start draft on it would probably be a good place to start, wouldn't it? So let's go and see what happens here. We will auto-complete. And we have indeed lost two players. Uh, no one that we've seen before and no one that I'm particularly worried about. I suspect they will be back to us before the season ends. So, yeah, no loss there. All right, well, we've had a strange day here at the Detroit Tigers. We've had Edmilson Fernandez return to, from seeing a famous guru in India. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting. He hopefully will survive that and be good for us next year. And TB has uh, injured himself, falling asleep at the wheel. Now, I just can't condone that. I'm sorry, mate. But thankfully, he's only out for four days. And uh, on the 2nd of January, we can just about handle that injury. But Jesus Christ, man, what are you doing? Pay for a driver. Not, uh, does he make money? He makes enough money to pay for a driver. Okay, a quick update on the Hall of Fame. No inductees this year. Uh, Jimmy Rollins has been dropped after 10 years. Uh, Mike Miner and Will Smith. Uh, and also uh, Pomerantz and Ken Giles were all dropped first year without receiving a vote. So uh, tough on them. And you can see there the others that have been dropped as well. So yeah, no inductees this season. All right, we are at spring training, which of course brings us to the end of uh, of the uh, of the episode. Now, this is how I see things lining up for us. Uh, Limas leading us off from second base. He should be able to do a good job of that. Singly batting a second at third. Uh, TB center field tentatively uh, will bat third. Otani and... I'm thinking Otani, if it's a right-handed pitcher, left-handed pitcher, we might look to, to tweak things around a little bit and maybe throw Vega in the lineup. Octavio Mendoza, for now, we've got him penciled in at five at first base. Child is uh, left field at six. Uh, Fernandez in uh, at shortstop, bat seven. Cavanos is a right-handed uh, pitcher, or if it's a left-handed pitcher, Rose, again, that could uh, change, batting eight. And then, of course, no designated hitter would mean the pitcher bats nine. The starting rotation is strong if all things go equal. Mario Morales is an absolute monster at 22 years old. Shane Baz, if he comes back fit, should be an absolute monster. Uh, Carmona, we know what he can do. Um, Eke, again, potentially is very good. If he lives up to potential, we've got four very, very good starters. And then Kyle Harrison, for now, uh, somebody else to fill in that fifth spot. Uh, we have other guys in the bullpen that could do it. Eknes is going to get a full season as closer, see what he can do. The setup guys will be Espinosa and Heinz as they were last season. It will be uh, it'll be the uh, the Jesus. It'll be Olsen. It'll be uh, Sawyer. It'll be Litwicky as the middle relievers. The long relievers is Barrera, who could also uh, fill in as being the starter, that fifth starter in place of Harrison, and Mario Black, who did a solid job for us uh, last year. Now, there's a couple of youngsters we'll give a go to in spring training, see how they come through. But I think that is looking like a very, very strong lineup. Uh, we're financially absolutely fine. We've got uh, 35 million essentially for free agents and almost 46 million for uh, for, for extensions. 
and we still don't need to extend anybody really the only person is uh, louis vega and he won't be around next season tony vega sorry and he won't be around next season this will definitely if he stays for this season be his last with us so yeah we're looking very very strong now of course when all these players start actually wanting proper money when they're not on minimum wage we're going to be in a little bit of trouble hopefully we'll save some money up in the bank and we'll be able to uh yeah to go from there but anyway that is that i will see you next time for opening day which this season is at home to texas we start as we finished off last season and hopefully we can put up a good performance there. Let me know what you think of uh, of what we've done, which isn't much. Basically, Otani for $2 million, uh, what you think we still need to do. I We could still obviously use a starting pitcher. There wasn't much in free agency. Uh, Walling ended up going somewhere for $25 million. Um, yeah, so that's maybe the one spot, but... I don't really, I don't really want to want to trade for anybody because I'm fairly happy with what we've got. And if the biggest problem I have with the side is the number five starter, uh, then it's probably not a bad thing, is it? So uh, yeah, that's it for today. I'll see you next time for Texas, and until then, take care.